Anchors away, nerds. I'm Alex. And I'm Danny. And we're seriously nerdy about so many things. All the things. A lot of them. Also stuff. Just generally. Generally, generally nerdy in a very serious way. If you don't know this about me, I am seriously nerdy about small animals. They're the cute ones, which is like 99.9% .9 of animals. Looking at you, orca whales. Not you. Not you. So we were wandering around our local Target probably six months to three years ago, as oft we do. And we played a game called, how did we get here? Oh Oops. no. Oops, why did we buy all these things? Our money. So we found the most handsome globe for $3 and we just kind of set it on a shelf because we had no idea what we were going to do with it. But we did know someday we were going to put a craft in it. Today is that day. So a couple of years ago, we contributed to a Kickstarter on a d and style campaign called Dungeons and Doggies, which took some characters that are dogs and some characters that are cats and then cast them in a similar to Dungeons and Dragons world. We mainly kickstarted because we wanted the adorable miniatures that were going to come with it. On top of that, we also contributed to a Kickstarter for the expansion, which was called Far Away Sea and featured all sorts of nautically themed animals, otters oh, yeah. and a little kraken. There's a llama. Oh boy, they're real cute y'all. All of that to say, we decided to take the globe we've been hanging on to for a long time and these adorable doggy figures we've been hanging on to for a long time and combine them into an adorable fantasy nautical diorama where there's an entire planet inhabited by small animals who are also maybe pirates. And by maybe pirates, I mean they're, they're definitely pirates. When Alex and I started this build, we thought it might be fun to approach the animals that live on this pirate ship as if we were putting together a heist. So meet Cassiopeia. She is our driver in the traditional sense of the heist. She may not love the ocean because she is in fact a Siamese cat, but she's fiercely loyal to this crew. She's a brilliant strategist and she is the driver of the boat women of the group taking charge of the ship and making sure things go smoothly. And yes, if you're sensing a theme here, they're all named after constellations. So this is Pavo, named after the Peacock constellation because Pavo is a bit of a showboater. He's the wild card on the team. He's the burglar. And major shout out to our friends at Dungeons and Doggies who gave this sculpt so many knives. We love Pavo and his obsession with his knives. He's a little bit of uh, you know, quick tempered, but he's a good boy. Our raccoon friend here is from the Raiders of the Lost Coast. We decided to name him Crux after the Southern Cross constellation, which is small, but exceptionally bright. Crux is our gadget guy, our tinkerer, and our demolitions expert. If you need a safe crack, there's no one better than Crux with his tiny, tiny hands. He's shy and keeps to himself, but he has a boisterous laugh, like the sound of 17th century gunpowder. This otter cleric from Animals of the Faraway Sea is Orion, our fearless leader. Inspired by the oldest and most recognized constellation, Orion is our smooth talker, truly the Danny Ocean of the group. He's usually at odds with Pavo, our resident loose cannon. Old and wise, Orion carries a stone in his pouch called the Speaking Stone, which should indicate who is supposed to speak at a given time, but the crew just ignores that. I was having so much fun painting these figures up, but I realized that space could be a bit of an issue in a ship this small. So I took this opportunity at this stage to do a quick layout test of how many figures I could realistically fit without getting too crowded. And unfortunately, some figures didn't make the cut. But you know who did make the cut? Our boy Sirius. He is a Newfoundland monk from the Dogs of the Faraway Sea pack, and we loved him because he just seemed like a gentle giant, obviously the muscle of this group. Uh, but in our minds, he is probably the most sophisticated. He has a fondness for wine and cheese. He brings a bit of a flair of you know, elegance anywhere he goes. Uh, so that is our sweet boy, Sirius. Okay, 
And last but not least, we have this adorable dummy. Uh, this is Cappy, short for Capricornus. He is a baby goat druid from the Animals of the Faraway Sea set, and we loved that he was named after the sea goat. He is the con man of our heist team. Very much deceptively cute, an easy distraction, but is just dumb as a box of rocks. Very much uh, getting started in his piracy career. To solve the problem of creating the space inside of the globe, we decided to use Tinkercad to 3D model an insert that we could put inside of the globe. Once we were sure we had the right size and dimensions for the space we wanted to fit all of our small boys, we took the globe and traced lines along the edges of where we needed to cut. After thoroughly securing the globe to our workbench, we then carefully dremeled out the side of the globe to create the space to insert the 3D print. With that inner 3D shell locking into place, I knew I had to figure out how to get those 3D print lines looking a little more like old weathered ship wood. So I thought I would turn to a product I've seen a lot of other makers use, and that is air dry clay. And this was my first time working with air dry clay, so I learned a lot in the process, but overall I was very happy with how it applies, some of the texture you're able to get into it, and in this particular brand, I was so happy that it didn't crack as it dried. So the texture that I was able to imprint in the wet clay really stayed through to the end. Is this my best sculpting work? No, but I do appreciate any time we're learning because we're all here to learn at the end of the day. Our first globe that my sister and I had when we were kids had continents with some dimension to them. So the mountain ranges sort of popped up off the globe and I thought that would be a fun technique to bring in here to this flat sphere. So I just grabbed pieces of air dry clay and used a little water to affix them to the globe. The fun thing about this is that I'm creating fictional continents with no plan whatsoever, and they ended up being really fun shapes for this world inhabited entirely by animals. Now I loved the idea of putting a ship's interior inside of the globe, but that did mean that the interior would be weirdly round. So I used some scrap styrofoam here to just create architectural details that would help that interior read a little more like a ship with some beams and supports as opposed to just a, a weird round wooden void. The nice thing about all of these materials, the air dry clay and the styrofoam, is that they're very forgiving. So it only takes a little contour putty and some Mod Podge to hide those imperfections and sort of smooth out the surface. We found this perfect little bookshelf built into the side of a rowboat on Loot Studio's nautically themed series and resin printed that to help fill out the ship's interior. Danny and I are constantly astounded by the sheer volume of nerdy things there are that you can 3D print on the internet. We're just so grateful to live in a time where 3D printers are affordable for an individual and there's a massive community of makers out there populating that world.
If you've ever watched us craft before, you know that we do a lot of trial and error placement as we go along, just to make sure everything has a home. And that was so important on a build like this where we have very limited floor space. We knew we had to give all these little critters a place to stand, but also bring in furniture that made sense to prop out the space and make it feel like a pirate ship. And is there anything more piratey than a really satisfying keg? I think not. And it wouldn't be a seriously nerdy video without some airbrushing. We started by basing everything with a black primer, and then we went in and layered colors on top of that. We opted for a nice tan for the outside of the globe so that we could give it that map effect. And then we did a nice brown for the interior of the ship, just to make that wood much easier to finish. And then a matte gold seemed perfect to finish out the stand for the glow. I love using shades to provide extra contrast and surfaces, but I'm learning to not always rely on exact colors that I have and instead mixing my own. So in this case, I mixed up a quick dark brown just to provide a little extra contrast in the wood planks inside the ship. I love this pile of treasure from Loot Studio, but I know because it's tabletop gaming, it's got a pretty hard edge so that it could be moved around a board, and I want mine to blend a little more into its environment. So I made these little snakes of clay, and I'm cutting them into the teeniest, tiniest coins that match the coin scale of the treasure pile. And that's because when I lay the treasure pile in, I can go back and add these dummy coins in to just blend the edge of the treasure pile into the, the boards of the ship. And then after that, it was as easy as throwing in some white highlight and then using the same color scheme that I've used throughout this build so far, which is this 80s inspired aqua purple, red and pink, just to bring some cohesion to the, the crew of this ship who clearly has a fondness for the 80s. The color scheme was also inspired by the HBO series, Our Flag Means Death. It's a wonderful new pirate show that came out last year. And the design team on that show brought so much color into the world of pirates. And that was so inspiring to see. So our color palette is uh, also proof that you don't have to always go reds and blacks and mean colors for pirates, especially when your pirates are adorable animals. And no pirate ship would be complete without a tiny map of the world that they are navigating. So Danny used the globe as a guide to create a tiny cartographical masterpiece. Is it accurate? We don't know. How do you chart longitude and latitude if you don't have thumbs? We knew we wanted the exterior of the globe to mirror the style of antique maps, so we dry brushed on a variety of tans and browns to get the overall effect that we were looking for. As we began painting the globe's continents and islands, the world of Animalia really started taking shape. Here was a planet devoid of humans, and orcas at Danny's insistence, but rich with all sorts of animal life. Much like our own troubled human world, Animalia was fraught with wars and power struggles until the bonds of civilization and technology inspired interspecies commerce and a global community started forming. 
at the time that our build is set, Animalia has reached the height of ocean-based trade, with shipping routes crisscrossing Animalia's many seas. The unwary merchant vessel might easily fall prey to the wily buccaneers that troll the oceans for treats and swag. It will still be some years before the larger kingdoms and nations of Animalia would bolster their navies enough to start rooting out the opportunistic seafarers, but for now, it truly was a golden age of animal piracy. Each region of Animalia takes its name from the civilized species that emerged from it. Mammalia was the home of many of Animalia's mammal species before a series of big stretches brought them to new, uncharted lands. New Avia was prime nesting ground for all varieties of burbs. Old Avia, unfortunately, had been lost in the 700-year war with the Cat Nation, but ultimately, the Avian Air Force managed to drive their feline nemeses to the secluded Isle of Cats, where the inhabitants continue to lay out and chase string and stuff. Reptio is a cold-blooded place, one star, would not recommend. And Scurrier was mostly full of rats and sneaks, so mind your valuables. Our intrepid crew, consisting mostly of Mamilio misfits, embraces the global pluralism that's more popular in the port cities of Animalia, and therefore they accept all animals as they are, so long as they have the coin to pay. The bookcase set in a rowboat that we had was conveniently positioned with a lantern at the very top. And I thought that might be a great opportunity to very carefully actually wire the lantern for light. So that meant drilling a hole in the back of the bookcase and then running a micro LED through down into the 3D printed shell and then down into the globe. So it was a good amount of drilling and a little bit of strategic planning. But in the end, I was able to wire this bad boy up and keep the battery pack in the base. Now the battery pack very, very, very barely fit, but it did technically fit, so this totally counts. Once I knew all the electronics worked, I could fix the inner shell to the outer globe shell using some JB Weld plastic epoxy glue, which is really tough stuff. We love this for plastic to plastic applications, but it was so important to make sure that the wires fit first. Otherwise, there's no way to go back and, and correct those wires. But everything fit and locked in place, and then I just had to go in and cover up all of the glue marks and turn that back into weathered ship wood. When it came time to finally glue everything in, this is one of those moments where I'm very glad that I've sort of tested everything a couple times as I went, just so there are no surprises. There are always some surprises, but at least they're not big, terrifying surprises. So it was time to position the furniture, and then the most satisfying part was sprinkling back in those tiny coins of clay, and then giving them a quick base of the same gold so that they would blend seamlessly and just look like this treasure pile had spilled over onto the floor of the ship. A few more piratey props, like this rope hanging from the ceiling, or a map that I wanted to make sure was the right direction, otherwise they would be terrible navigators. And then it was time for the really fun part, tiny bottles of animal-friendly booze. I don't know what the animals drink on this planet, but they're pirates, so obviously they're drunk most of the time.
The final step was placing our crew around the deck. It seemed only fitting to place Pavo on top of the treasure hoard, where he felt most at home. We did it. We made a small globe for our world of animals. Isn't it handsome? Well, I think we learned a fair amount of things on this one. I'm getting more and more comfortable with using the Dremel. If you are going to also try to cut into a plastic sphere, please be very, very careful. The more that I use a thing that's intimidating, the more I get comfortable with it. Be very careful, please. Yes, please. Oh, shout out to Loot Studios that designed a couple of the 3D models that we used. Uh, I had the opportunity to use a resin printer recently and make those, and boy, howdy. They are beautiful sculpts. They were so much fun to paint. I'm getting a little bit more comfortable working with electronics. And by that, I mean, for this build, we upgraded from fairy lights to a similar set, but I actually had to combine wires in order to make an electrical circuit. You know what else we learned? How important likes and subscribes are to grow your YouTube channel? I don't like asking it. I don't subscribe to it. But if you could like and subscribe, that seriously helps. Thanks for watching this video. And now the final footage. There once was a ship that put to sea And the name of that ship was the Billy O.T. The winds blew harder, bow dip down Blow me, bully boys, blow Soon may the weatherman come To bring us sugar and tea and rum One day when the tanning is done We'll take our leave and go She had not been two weeks from shore And down on her a right whale board The captain called all hands and swore We'd take that whale in tow Kapow! Kapow is my catchphrase for this time. Kaboomers! Uh, no, not that one. Zib zab zibi. Dooby doo bops. Chicken in a can. Choose wisely. Oh, that's a good one. I would honestly be friends with a scorpion before I'd be friends with oh an orca gosh, whale. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? A thousand percent. I hate Scorpions them. are terrifying. In this world, there are no orcas. Whole globe, full of oceans, zero orcas. Lots Cannon. of other whales. Cannon. No orcas. Uh, well, chapter one. There were no orcas. It's a lie. The oh. orcas were dead to begin with. Are you just directly quoting Dickens? Yeah, I'm real classy. These Previously people. on Seriously Nerdy, made some Danny class. and Alex made a craft. That wasn't my fandom. I'm gonna cut out. Don't be seriously nerdy about it. No. Okay. I'm not. No one is. Some, some people, people are. are. Tell them about Target. <laughs> Smells like syrup. Seafaring pirates. Yar, yar, yar. Zero percent orcas. <laughs>